Hey guys, back in the bunker today. Got a fire going in the little stove over here. Don't pay any attention to that stuff in the floor. And there's our next project. I picked up this uh, Smithy 1220 lathe mill combo. We're gonna learn how to use it. I've never messed with machine work. I've been around it, seen it done just a few times. Of course, watch tons of videos on YouTube, but I'm gonna to attempt to teach myself how to do this, but first things first, this machine's been sitting for several years and it's been used hard before that. Um, I think I, I figured there's about 40 to 45 thousandths of play sideways in this table and no telling how much forward to back and it's stiff. I mean you can see there's see if we can clean the mark off. Can't even find the mark. But if we go from man that dial's dirty. Just go from right there. I mean, that's shoot. That's fifty thousands. Anyways, we're gonna clean this little bit of surface rust off. I got some brake parts cleaner, which I know is not the technically the right thing to clean this with but it's what i've got and i know it'll i know it'll get the surfaces clean i'm not too worried about the paint i mean it's chipping off all over and then i've got a little aw32 hydraulic fluid in my oil can we're going to oil everything up really good clean it off see if we can't get some of this slop adjusted out of this thing and then hopefully in the next couple videos we'll get it we'll get the wiring done so that we can plug it in and try it out i've already even picked up some aluminum to practice on to make a few things <clears throat> and such so i think to start with got my fancy multicolored Harbor Freight Allen wrenches. I think we're going to pull these two screws off, take the nut off the handle, take all that off, and see where that gets us. Because I haven't exactly figured out how to get this, the cross slide part of this table off yet. I can run it all the way over, and you can see the shaft back in here and it may be harder to get out than i think it is but that's where we're going to start first if we can get the cross side slop cross slide slop boy I said that three times fast out of it that'll make me feel a lot better um like i said i don't know that much about machine work but i know what I'm going to be doing with it, which I'm, you guys will learn eventually. I don't necessarily need it to be perfect, but I need it to be a little better than what it is. So let's pull this off. I'll pull that off, catch back up with you guys, see what we can figure out. Okay, guys, here's what I found. I think this is... It's not necessarily a simple fix, but it was an easy find. So, like I said, I pulled these two screws out of the end cap. These two right here. Took the key out, handles off, index dial, whatever you want to call it. It has these two little bearings in there which this bearing here, as you can see, 
that was the outermost bearing. So there was a the outer bearing or the inner bearing, excuse me. The inner bearing, then this piece, then an outer bearing in the knob. And you set your preload on the bearings with the nut on the knob. So pulled all that off, found the one bad bearing. But our main issue is right here in this end block. As you can see, if I push and pull on the threads, that's where all of our play is coming from. Now, if I go ahead and back this on out, back it on out here, this piece is what is supposed to set the preload on those threads. There are two, which I, I can't get you guys down in there to see that very well. There's a two threaded holes that are supposed to have machine screws in them. And the machine screws are missing. So, since you can't set the preload, it just flops around. Also, I think, I think by taking screws out here, screws out here, and I'm sure there's two more underneath there, I can pull this whole piece off, turn it upside down, because I really don't think, now I got it in some kind of a goofy bind. There it goes back down in the hole. I bet there's screws underneath here that have backed off and are causing this block to waller around because I'm going to guess that it should not do that. So, for the next little project, I'm going to pull this table the rest of the way off and set it off to the side for now. We'll clean the underside of it and all this stuff. Polish all this up really nice to get the tolerances nice and tight. I'll take these screws out here, whatever's underneath here, and I'll turn this upside down and I'll catch, I'll catch back up with you. And we can go from there. Okay, now you can see we've got a giant mess. So, to get the bottom half of the crossfeed table off, you have to unbolt it from the carriage here. And then you have to unbolt the power, the power feed threads, which I don't know all the technical names for all this stuff. So bear with me guys, if you're a machine shop guy, this is probably not the video for you. But anyways, so took the two bolts out of the end, the end here, took it off, that let the threads kind of come loose. And then I slid it all the way down to the end here. Took, oh, what are these called? Anyways, took the adjustment piece here, backed it all the way off, took it out, and that gave us enough slop to get this piece uncoupled from this piece, and then it just slid right off the end. Now what we found when we turned it over, the piece that I thought would have screws in it did not. But man, look how nasty all this is. All that grime and grease build up. It all needs to be cleaned, needs a good deep cleaning. So, what I found, this just this is just a machine fit down inside this hole. And there's actually a little bitty tiny thin shim that I'm sure is designed to be a wear shim down inside that hole. Now, probably... Some of the problem with this is that wear shim has probably needs to be replaced. So I'm going to try and get a hold of the company. I'm going to try and pick up screws for this in town. I've dug through all my machine screw cans and can't find ones that seem to be the right fit. So I need to get screws for that. That should fix this issue. The only other thing that we need to address is why there's so much slop 
between here and the output gear in this gearbox. Sorry, I get to playing with this stuff and forget to talk to you guys. So I think I think most of the slop I think that's just an idle gear. I'm not real sure. I'm probably waving you guys all over the place messing with this. It does look looks like everything in there is in pretty good shape. This gear here this might be getting a little worn but it is a brass gear so it is replaceable. Um, I assume that would be considered a wear item. Um, but we're going to look into that a little later. Hopefully, I'll, t I'll, I'll work on this a little more and, and see what it's going to take to get this slop out of it. Some of it's in there. Some of it may be bearing preload. The bearings may not be very good in there either. That took some of it out, just tightening the, the nut up. So, now I think we're down to mostly just a good cleaning and getting some parts. So, stay tuned for part two of this video. And hopefully then we've got parts and we're going back together. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna replace this or not. I think, uh, I mean, it's really, if you look down in there, it's just almost like tin foil. It's that thin. We might do something different there, I'm not sure. Um, Yeah, just a lot of cleaning and waiting on parts now. And hopefully the next video will be part two of this and we've got all our stuff. We'll put it back together and everything will be nice and tight and clean and work freely like it's supposed to. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. And hopefully if you have one of these or looking to pick up one of these, I just found this one used local to me. And... I think I got it worth the money, but time will tell. Stay tuned and we'll learn how to we'll learn how to do all this stuff together and should make for an interesting time. So hit the subscribe button, leave me likes and comments, and we'll catch you on the next one.